G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and I'm here with the creative team of Bojack Horseman, an original Netflix show, so make sure to check that out. But uh, I am absolutely wrapped to be talking with you guys today because never before have I had the opportunity to speak with the people who are involved start to finish with the creation of a show. So uh, if, if you don't mind in, in introducing yourselves and sort of your roles on the show. Uh, hi, I'm Lisa Hannawell and I'm the production designer and co-producer of the show. Um, I sort of art direct and I design all the characters and kind of oversee the whole look of the show. I'm Mike Hollingsworth. I'm the supervising director of the show. I'm in charge of like all of the picture, all of, everything from uh, at creating new little characters and gags to fixing blinks. <laughs> wow, awesome! <laughs> fixing blinks is important. And well, this I'm the star of the show. This Bojack is Bojack Horseman. Horseman. Bojack Horseman. Yeah. Welcome, Bojack Horseman. It's Fantastic. <laughs> It's, it's such a pleasure to have you. It's really me. I'm Adam Parton, uh, lead character designer. You're a liar! I, That's I, awesome. I am specifically that as well. Um, basically, uh, I guess my role is uh, taking Lisa's like, initial sketches and getting them all filled it, filled out and rounded out uh, ready for animation. So we have Lisa, Adam and Mike. It's a pleasure to have you with me today. Thank you so much for taking the time. No worries, Jazza. Thanks. Yeah. So for those who aren't familiar with the show, how would you describe the show to people and uh, how would you introduce Bojack? Um, I think you're the best at Mike, describing Mike, it. Mike, Mike has Bojack pretty much down. Yeah. I think Bojack, Bojack is kind of based on Mike a little bit, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, Bo <laughs> Bojack Hos Horseman. <laughs> Bojack Horseman is a celebrity. He's like, uh, who's a celebrity today? Like, um, but he's like specifically a watchdog. Like up the car celebrity. kit from Knight Rider, a celebrity. Okay. Okay. That is a celebrity, I guess. Yeah. Bojack is a celebrity who was the star of a show in the '80s, quite like uh, Full House or Happy Days. So this show was wildly successful in the '80s. And, um, you know, everybody knows him. Everybody loved Bojack. But that was 30 years ago. Now he mm -hmm. has done nada, zip, zilch, since then. And he's just some washed up guy who, wherever he goes, people recognize him. And uh, they have that moment <laughs> where they go, that's Bojack Horseman. Ooh, that's Bojack <laughs> Horseman. He doesn't look so good. <laughs> What I want to ask you guys is, you all have such a hands-on role in the show. So, what stage is the show in when it, when it gets to you? And where does your process take the show through up until you then deliver it onto the next people? So, you know, is it involving animatics and storyboards or the animation itself? Like, what in particular? I guess we're all in there a little bit because each of our roles definitely, I mean, specifically these two guys, but each of our roles do involve getting into every aspect just to sort of make sure that what we're doing fits with everything else. Um, yeah. yeah. We should mention that the show is created by Raphael Bob Waxberg. Yeah, he's um, one of my best friends from high school actually. We've known each other a long time um, and we've collaborated before on web comics and stuff so um, when he created this show it was somewhat based on uh, my drawings. Um, so yeah, I, I start designing the characters as soon as the first draft of the first script comes out. We've all worked on a lot of Sorry. stuff, but this is uh, like we get these wonderful, beautiful scripts mm -hmm. come down from Raphael, and uh, you know uh -huh. he's working the whole time with Lisa. They're talking about like in um, season one, there's a character, uh, a Quentin Tarantino uh, spoof type character, and he was coming to Lisa while he was still writing it. Yeah. Yeah, the writer's room is actually really close to my office, so Raphael can pull me in there and be like, do you want this to be Quentin Tarantulino or Quentin Tarantuna or Quentin Tarantutan? <laughs> um, and I was like, well, we haven't drawn a lot of spiders or creepy crawlies yet, so let's make it a, tarant a tarantula. Um, See, that that's an interesting thing about the show is there's this mix of almost storybook-like um, characters that are based around animals and like you know when do you decide when they're human or when they're animals and it like it's an interesting sort of process so take me through that um it's supposed to be mostly humans because the animals 
pop out so much and take up so much attention that we can't put too many of them because then it's the only thing you'd look if at. If it was all animal yeah. gags, then those animal gags wouldn't be special. Yeah, yeah. there wouldn't be gags anymore. So we yeah. definitely talk a lot about, oh, should this be a human? Or are there already like too many animals in this scene? And we want to maintain a balance always. Sometimes it's definitely an animal because like yeah. the, the animalistic char- characteristics like are what make that character. But other times, like, yeah. the decision is made a little bit later. And we like to mix it up sometimes. Like, Vanessa Gecko is described as this, like, slimy, slippery lady, but then you see her and she's a human. And there's, a, like, occasionally I'll pop in a human that looks kind of like one of his parents was a frog or something. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting to talk about it. It's like, in this world, animals and humans get married. Yeah. And if, they, if, a, if a goat marries, a goat man marries a human woman... <laughs> They would sire children that would be both full human and full goat. We don't have a lot. No of, hybrids. We don't have hybrids, but but like there's still characteristics. humans will definitely take on characteristics yeah. from their animal parents and vice versa. So yeah. there is twins that I saw somewhere along the way, and one is a human and the other is a badger. badger? Yeah. 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 So it, it gets a little bit They're mixed up. They're not identical twins. Yes, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> which brings me to my next question. Revolving around the art style of Bojack, which is quite unique. How would you best describe the art and animation style of Bojack? Um, the art style sort of came from my personal work, which has a lot of animal heads on human bodies and also kind of combines this sort of high level of detail with this surrealism and um, a lot of patterns and textures and kind of a watercolor look that we tried to incorporate into the show. Lisa is a terrific illustrator who, even before Bojack, was doing illustrations for New York Magazine and the New York Times and New York, New York. <laughs> Just a lot of New York there, yeah? Just New York stuff. <laughs> uh, but also Lucky Peach and, and your, Lisa's illustration style has a DIY look to it. Yeah, it's sort of handmade, yeah. so even though we're creating everything from the show on the computer, I'll scan in, you know, handmade watercolor textures. And, yeah, we, so um, we strive to make the show look like a zine. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more. Which is really cool, it's a lot of attention to detail because you have such a specific vision for it. Yeah, all of the designs filter uh, or bottleneck right through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to... Um, pick colors that you know appeal to me personally and I'll put in objects you know that I like or objects from my you know the house I grew up in and I kind of just want to make the whole show feel more personal and unique like, and, like and warm sp- like spoons yeah you said when you were yeah. a kid you would always eat cereal with a spoon <laughs> and so like in the show there's spoons that's right exactly yeah yeah and chairs and stuff. What, a lot of the boarders would have people eating cantaloupe with a fork. <laughs> Lisa yeah. says that that's not going to no, fly. No, my personal no, experience is when I was a child <laughs> growing up in the San Francisco area, we would eat things with spoons. So let's put spoons in this show. In regards to the animation style, um, it's it's kind of realistic as opposed to cartoony, and I think that that works mm-hmm. because the world is so kind of bizarre when you look at it. Um, that mm. to keep the animation like somewhat realistic like grounds it all and makes it uh, yeah. I guess more believable Well, like you were saying with um, punctuating the humor of using animals Sparingly, I suppose it would do a similar thing if you're using more realistic proportions and uh, animation style Then it makes the ab- absurd things really stick out. Yeah, yeah. and it makes the more emotional uh, deeper moments of the show I think uh, resonate more Yeah, actually, this has been a really fun show for us all to work on because um, this show isn't always funny. No, it's often really sad. I think I think some of its like best moments are where it's not. Yeah, we had um, in season one we had boarders who were working on episodes who would just view the animatics and just the animatics before they were any, any of them animated would make them cry. They were some of the more sensitive members of the crew. (laughs) My next question is actually in regards to the programs and equipment that you use, which I know a lot of people probably would think is a boring question, but my audience is going to eat this up. Um, Like in an industry standard place like you guys work, where you're making something for large scale distribution, what are you using through the process to create this? Uh, I design everything in Photoshop. 
uh, because I do not know how to use Flash. <laughs> Whereas, <laughs> yeah, the the all the I could teach you. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. I've tried to learn. Actually, it's, it's funny really you say hard. that. Um, <laughs> one of our one of our character designers actually uh, told me that he learnt to use Flash uh, using your tutorials. So, no, uh, really? and he's he's one of That's our best insane. designers. Oh so I, I would like to say thank you for gotta, uh, training him well. Okay, I gotta watch them wow. by season three. I will know how to use. Them. Um, yeah, apparently they're really good and accessible. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah. So as that seems apparent, like uh, all the sort of the actual art that's on screen, um, both mm -hmm. backgrounds and characters are all created in Flash. Um, yeah, we really? we take the show. The show um, is boarded in Flash. Eventually, I'm mm -hmm. sure everything will move over to Toon Boom. Oh yeah. But I love Flash. No, I mean the industry. Mm. Oh, okay, cool. That's that's very interesting. So the show in its current form is essentially created in Flash. I am like a old school Flash hack. I was on the very first Flash show, the Flash mm -hmm. TV show, um, Kid Notorious for Comedy Central. I, I wrote it all the way for about 12, 13 years. Sorry, this is probably like the best revelation that's ever happened on my channel because a large proportion of my content and viewers are around the entire, the, the, using Adobe Flash. So it's pretty cool to, to hear you say that um, you know, you're using it for a, a new, current, popular TV show. You know, no, it's, great. Yeah. it's great for storyboarding. Everything's gonna eventually probably move over to Toon Boom because Toon Boom has like salespeople who go out everywhere and salespeople <laughs> yeah. talking to producers, money talking to money, and yeah. and meanwhile, Toon Boom and Storyboard Pro isn't easy to use. It's actually very clunky and funky. But it's good mm -hmm. for editorial. Toon Boom goes, Toon Boom and Storyboard Pro go right into Final Cut Pro. Yeah. Um, seamlessly. Yeah. But how does that help us when we have to know. As, draw as far as an like, appealing drawing? Yeah, as far as an art creation tool and a straight up animation tool, I still think Flash has got a lot of chops and uh, it needs to be like seen as that. Um, and Flash is terrific for storyboarding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It seems to work mm -hmm. really well for translating. Yeah. What I, I mean, my sketches. I mean, the characters look almost exactly like whatever I yeah. design. Bojack is pushing like Flash to its like limits, like yeah. uh, as a lot of the animators and background artists in particular. Because will our tell you. show has textures in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very detailed and layered. Yeah, the textures are built into the Flash files, and that can be taxing mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. program, which is only basically meant to make flash or banners yeah. at the top of websites. <laughs> yeah. um, and there's, there's definitely it's sometimes... Funny, like, I think people are often surprised with how much you can do uh, with flash, you know, and I, I use it for all my client work and everything, you know, so it's really cool to hear. Australia that. has been at the, at the lead of making uh, amazing stuff with flash with Adam Phillips and... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And who's the great guy who's the head over oh, at... Oh, Bernard Derriman, who's now... Bernard the, Derriman. Uh, he's a they are both, like, legends to me. Yeah, he's a supervising director I'm, at... Um, I used to work with those two guys at Disney. Yeah, um, and Adam Parton. No way! I don't know That's so that. cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, yeah, those two guys have been doing great stuff for ages. And, uh, yeah... The and Neil Sanders, who's great. Oh, yeah, Neil Sanders yeah. as well. Yeah, he's, he's awesome yeah. too. He's doing a lot with his loops and stuff here. Yeah. Like, he's, he's getting really popular with... That community. Bojack loves Loop de Loop. <laughs> Does he? That's awesome. Oh, uh, the show. Wait, do you know what it is? Yeah, Loop de Loop. Yeah, absolutely. I, I used to. I've gone to some of their screenings in Melbourne. They they've done weekly screenings and stuff. We which is we really may cool. well have met or seen each other because I've been to those as well. No way. Yeah. That's cool. We probably have. <laughs> cool venue. In your best words, how would you describe using visuals to punctuate humor? Because uh, humor in the show, and it is in a large form sort of a comedy show uh, a large part of the role of creating the punchlines get, getting the hit that they need to work is, is actually in your hands it's very much a visual thing as well so how would you describe the process of making that work and and how it aids it well our show is basically by definition a talking head show like the simpsons yeah it's very or family guy very so script -based. in yeah, many ways the, the best thing that we can do is actually get out of the way of the writing mm -hmm. Because uh, mm -hmm. if you do kind of like big, kind of crazy <laughs> takes, but meanwhile Bojack is trying to tell his girlfriend they're breaking up, it kind of, uh, you know, defeats the point. But, and then, yeah. you know, uh, 
we do have these very sad things that are juxtaposed with these big wild um, gags and big silly things, human birds that are flying and um, yeah. and um, there's like 20 different kinds of humor going on yeah. in the background at all times. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Sometimes it's just like, like I'll add like a little painting of like a dog butt on the, in Mr. Peanut Butter's house or like, I think funny, I think stupid t-shirt slogans are really funny. So I draw a lot of characters wearing Lisa Hannawalt loves butts. I do. Uh, I have a very butt based that should be aesthetic. At the, that should be the name of the video. <laughs> the YouTube video. But I'm also a fan of boobs. That's awesome. I'm right in your demographic. That's like my cup of tea. Is that's that's one of the other things about... You have butts in your cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand Absolutely. volume. Absolutely. <laughs> if there's a butt in your cup of tea, then yeah. it would spill out all the tea. Depends how... Maybe if the cup... It's a volume or issue. Or butt small yeah. enough. I was going to say, that's one of the things about Bojack, though. It is a very layered show, so it's got a lot of, like, rewatchability. Um, you can watch like you could watch it once and then the second time around there's going to be so many things in the background that like Lisa was talking about posters and stuff like that that's and, often like, my goal when, when designing a background <coughs> is I want to make it look like something people will want to pause or, or rewatch over again because it's for Netflix too people can kind of rewatch the show over and over again what are the biggest lessons you've learned in the process of creating BoJack uh, for me I've learned how to collaborate with a ton of other people because before working on BoJack, I was sort of a lone freelancer and I worked by myself on everything. And now I have to kind of explain to people what I want and see other people translate my drawings through their arms. And it's like kind of wonderful and frustrating at the same time, but mostly amazing to see what other people come up with and to collaborate. I think on a, on a personal level for me, uh, this is my first uh, job um, in the States. And coming here, I was just like, whoa, I'm never going to make it in, like, the big Hollywood world. And um, I still actually think that. Um, <laughs> that's not true. Um, uh, just, no, coming here and just working with such awesome people and stuff like that, I just sort of realized that, like, it's it's just people. As long as you have good people on a production, the production goes well, and it's, a, it's really good to work on. Um, so... Um, I kind of just learned that America is not as scary as I once thought. Aww. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> wait, uh, no, that was, Aww. wait, no, that was just that really, that was that sappy pop piece that they always do in these things. I'm sorry, can you cut that bit out? No, I liked it. So having uh, gone through the experience of creating the first season and now well into creating more of the show, what advice would you have for people who want to get into something like what you three are doing, uh, creating a, a television show or a, a a cartoon for people to watch. I would say um, create whether you're a writer or an animator or just a cartoonist who's interested in storyboarding or whatever you want to do create a lot of your own work and put it somewhere where people can see it um, whether that's just like a blog or, or whatever that's how I got my first illustration jobs and and I was making my own comics and self-publishing them and giving them out to friends and um, that's how I slowly started to build up more and more work and a fan base and um, yeah, just create a lot of your own work. Get your stories out there. Yeah, it was great. I read an interview with Pat Oswalt, the terrific comedian, and he said that when asked to do the show, he saw that Lisa Hanawalt was the designer on it, and he's like, oh, Lisa Hanawalt designed the show? Yeah, I'll do voices for it for sure. But meanwhile, like, it's how like, did Pat know about my... <laughs> Lisa's not directly <laughs> writing the scripts or anything. Yeah. No. Yeah, but like, he, I guess he still acknowledged that like he liked her art and the the content of her art, so he would she would have to agree with the the writing. Yeah, so yeah. he'd be on board as well. Yeah. Um, I agree with what Lisa said because more and more like uh, I'm seeing that like the bigger studios are becoming savvy enough to like go, hey, look at this person's like blog or Tumblr and like look how many followers they have. And it's like if we get on board with this person, like we've instantly got this many like fans as well sort of thing so yeah, like social media is actually i mean it's horrible but it's an enormous help yeah to someone starting a career yeah. and trying yeah. to get their work out yeah there. lisa became big i believe because she is one of the most successful of what i like to call tumblr babies oh. <laughs> <laughs> artists who pretty much make their name cut their teeth 
they cut their baby teeth <laughs> <laughs> on Tumblr, and that's like where their that's their canvas. Well, I put my website on Tumblr so that because it's very easy to keep putting new content and having people spread that content. So I don't know if Tumblr is the best thing nowadays, but even Twitter can be a great way to share artwork or Instagram or um, yeah, it's a good way to get out there. So yeah, and, and these big animation studios are scouting people from websites like that. Yeah, and it's really? and, and, and um, you know international borders aren't really an issue for that sort of thing. Like uh, I'm hearing more and more of like people uh, back home like getting like courted by some of the studios here, uh, specifically because like you know they're seeing their content and they're just going this stuff's great, and then they find out where they are and it's like they're already sold. So. They just go, come on over. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all one wor world. Thanks, Bono. <laughs> <laughs> I can't thank you all enough for taking the time to speak with me and my audience today. And I know that everyone's just going to be wrapped to, uh, to hear the things that you've been able to talk to me about. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. No worries. Yes. Watch BoJack yeah. on Netflix. Oh yeah, do that. <laughs> Which you can do in Australia soon as well, because it's going to be out. Sorry, a little reminder there. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Really looking forward to uh, when that comes here too, so that I can tell all my friends to watch your show. Seriously, well. watch it. BoJack is the first show that I've worked on that I actually enjoy watching myself. So like, Aww. that's that's the thing. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, all of you. So uh, I really appreciate your time, uh, Adam, Mike, and Lisa. Uh, Thank you so much. I really appreciate Thank it. You. So, Thank you. Thank no you. Thank you. Cool. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. Check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. If you want to support my work and get a few goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, and get yourself something nice. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore, or share your own content, head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.